Hello and welcome back. These big cable bundles are the control lines on the registers and they kind of snake their way up here in a big old mess and plug into all the different elements of the bus control up here. This set here are currently still hardwired and that's the only set of control lines here that I haven't done anything with yet. These are address bus select. What you've got here is one line per address register and I can only bring one low at a time and that selects which of these registers is asserting its current value to the address bus. Now at the moment I've just got the first line pulled low which is telling the program counter it wants to output to the address bus and that's obviously why the processor is working with its uh, instruction sequences at the moment but we are going to want to be able to bring AVR address registers out so let's build some control logic for this. This is the 138 328 line decoder. I'm not going to spend much time describing how this works because I've used those for lots of the other elements in the bus control. If you want to see more about that, look at video 14. We've got the free select lines and then two active low and one active high enable line. Now I have wired up outputs 1 through 6, so I've ignored output 0. I've done that partially in order to maintain the same index consistency as with the transfer bus, but I do have a use in future for position 0. OK, so if I bring all those lines low, I'm not selecting any of the address registers out. I'll stack this the wrong way around. OK, so register 1 is the program counter. Register 2 is the return address. 3 is the stack pointer. 4 and 5 are SI and DI respectively. OK, so I've got three control lines there which will allow me to select the register that outputs. For now, Done here. Dislodged the reset line while I was uh, moving that around. Okay, that's all still working. So nice having a reset button. Okay, now. Obviously, the reason why we have these new control lines is so we can access memory from something other than the program counter address. So if you were to recall video 11 in this series that I titled Fetch Denied, that was when I created this control line here. What that does, that suppresses fetching and prevents the program counter from increment. So this is basically a control line that should be output from pipeline stage two if it's trying to either perform a memory read or a memory write. So this line is basically a bus request line from this pipeline stage that says, I want to take control of the memory. Now, you might think that the fetch unit is needs some way of specifying that it wants the program counter on the address bus. But if we plug these control lines into pipeline stage two, we can solve that very simply by having it always select the program counter apart from when it wants to select something else. So we should be able to handle that quite easily. But what I would like to do today is both wire these three new control lines that select the address register that's asserting to the address bus, but I'd also like to wire this one back into pipeline stage two. Now, when I was planning out this video, I did actually realize that there was another use I could put this control line to. And so I'm actually going to channel it into an OR gate that will basically give me two connections to it. I accidentally had two things driving this uh, select input. 
And now these LEDs are dim. I'm getting a reset every time I clock it. No, I'm not. I'm getting a reset every time I hit the reset button. I had made a small mistake down here, but what I'd actually done is I'd already moved these three control lines over into Pipeline Stage 2's control unit, and rather than outputting a 1, that's outputting a 0 until we fix the control logic. And so things weren't working right, and that was just a, a slight oversight on my part. Okay, so I've now got an additional four control lines in Pipeline Stage 2. Three of them select once we move this back over, three of them select which address register outputs to the bus, and one of them is the bus claim line, which will force the fetch unit to not fetch anything and just dispatch a null into the pipeline, which means that the pipeline stage two can arrange for a memory read or write using a different address register. But I also put that control line through an OR gate, so I've got an additional line here which can override that fetch behavior. And my thinking was very simply to wire that to the reset line, because since we've gained this OR gate, it doesn't cost us anything to do that, and it means that we uh, can simplify the startup behavior very slightly. I imagine many of you actually saw my mistake there, but my vantage point is not as good as yours. That's my excuse. I wired both of those inputs to the same input on the OR gate and not different ones. Unconnected line would have uh, floated high and that prevented fetch. Finally, it all works. Now, one of the big benefits of wiring the reset line into this OR gate in order to drive this control line, in addition to controlling it from the pipeline, is we're no longer during pipeline reset, clocking the increment over here. I don't think that has any negative effects, but it's just one of those things that doesn't quite seem right. But additionally, we're no longer relying on address zero being a null, because a null is what gets output here when we set this control line. So now after a reset, everything is fine. Okay, so let's move these control lines to here. Now at the moment, the address bus is in an indetermined state, which is actually why I was seeing odd behavior on these LEDs earlier. So let's uh, disconnect the power temporarily and go and look at uh, adding control support for that. Okay, we're not gonna be able to make these instructions fully work today because we need the memory bridge to do memory operations. But what we can do is add some instructions for reading from memory and we can see them partially work. That'll do. I'll just throw in a couple of fake memory reads here. So we need a control line for bus request. Now firstly, every single one of these instructions allows for memory to be read from the program counter. So we need to add to each and every one of these instruction definitions this new uh, address PC control value. But rather than add it to all of them, I'm going to use this default out parameter which I did in fact put there for exactly this purpose, because I knew there would be some control lines we'd want to be able to control more globally. Okay, bear with me a second. Um, when I add instructions to the architecture file, the definitions for the opcodes are automatically created and placed into this header file, which makes it a lot easier and clearer for me to build the control logic. And I've just noticed that these ones are the first memory read ones, so there's a bug in my code where I'm not putting an appropriate distinction in here.
Right, so we want to load the A register off the main bus. We need a entry up here. Oh, that was interesting. I did say we were going to change the assert and load for nulls to index zero next time we were in here. And I'm going to give the memory bridge the address of 15. I'm making that 15 because it's a simple bit pattern that you can test for with just a four input AND gate. And I've got a suspicion I need some extra logic that other registers that are, are reading from the buses won't be needing for the memory writes. So we're asserting memory to the bus. That's the bit that doesn't exist yet, but we'll uh, put the control lines in for it. And we're loading into the A register but we also want to assert SI onto the address bus. And we also need to output the bus request line, but we also need to remove the program counter selection from there, and indeed any other uh, address bus selection line. Okay, that was a mistake. From there. Okay, so that looks like quite a complicated line, but I think that's right. I'm always making this mistake. Okay, let's get those into the ROMs. Okay, place your bets now. So this should be a load A comma address of SI. So when this comes up to here, we should see SI get selected. Now it's requesting the memory bridge, which is a device that doesn't exist yet, right to the bus. I could build a quick stub one to go on here, but that's just throwaway circuitry. I'll build that properly when uh, I build the main memory with a RAM and a ROM chip. So yeah, we've selected nothing to fetch. We appear to have stuck a zero into the register. We know that's kind of indetermined. And we've put SI on the bus. Okay. Oh, push the reset button and not the step button. So that's SI, SI into B. Next one should be DI into C, which is not. Oh no, because we got a not here because we read from memory. There it is. That's cool, that works. Okay, this behavior is interesting actually. Previously when we've done a operation that prevents fetch, it's always been a constant load. So we're pulling in immediate data as a parameter to an instruction. And that happens in pipeline stage one, which means the instruction is immediately followed by a NOP. But with the memory reads, this is what we get. We actually managed to fetch two memory reads, which is the move A comma address of SI and move B comma address of SI. And they're both going into the, the pipeline because they're not processed until pipeline stage two. And that's the one which forces the fetch unit to, to not fetch an instruction. So we get this kind of bubble of two instructions followed by two programmatically generated knobs, which follow behind it. So in the same for these reads through DI. And then it starts executing the previous test code that I had in the program. And we've improved the reset. OK, that's good. Right, now the big reason why I wanted to do that is I wasn't so worried about adding the control into the pipeline, but this chunk of, uh, of breadboard here that controls 
all of the control lines in the register stack and the other devices on the main bus. This is essentially complete now, so I'm going to start planning out turning that into a PCB. I'm hoping to do that in a long thin PCB that sits down here, so everything's nice and close to the registers it's going to be controlling most of the time, and then I'll just have a few wires coming out to go to the control and a few other places, but we'll get rid of all of this mess of wires when I've converted that to PCB. That'll be very nice actually. Okay, there's a few uh, hiccups there. I made a few mistakes trying to put the wiring together, but it's all working in the end. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.